is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering One Piece, episodes 520 through 522. Big guns assembled, the danger of the fake straw hats. The battle is on, show them what you got from training. And everyone together, Luffy setting out for the new world. In these episodes, we have the showdown between the fake straw hats and the Marines, which doesn't go awesome. And then we have everybody trying to hassle our actual people and Boa stepping in. And we also have everybody bringing their allies from the various islands they were on to bear in this fight. Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. And I'm Florian. Hello. Hello. Welcome back, Florian. So, you know what I'm going to ask you? Why these episodes? Hmm. Why are you here today? Um, oh, I just really, I mean, I like them, but also it is like truly a new chapter, um, like just of the series, you know, and I just wanted yeah. to mainly make a check-in basically. So, and I, it was between these three and the last three, but I felt like these are a little bit more appropriate because this is actually where they all get back together. Yeah, so, I agree. Know. Definitely. Um, and I expected it to work out the way that it did, but I was just like wanting more time of them together. And I will get that, you know, that's what will be coming. Yeah. But I was like desperate for a little bit more back and forth with everybody and it's a uh, kind of mayhem right away. So we don't get as much as I am looking for, but that's also, we've got to like find the right time for everybody to showcase what they can do as well. We had some of that, but I'm really looking forward to like our first battle where our people are really going all out. Mm. Um, all it's right. going to be interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, so, I just there in that case you like these episodes. I, um, like I I'm plans. really enjoying the fake straw hat thing so okay. much. Like, it's so stupid. It's a, like they just assume that Luffy got really, fat. <laughs> which like you know, uh, two years is not a long time for that to happen, but it can happen, I suppose. Um, mm. And that Nami like shrank a foot. Although I guess you can't tell height by these posters. But really. I do really love the fact that like they make all the the fake straw hats are making the this I'm I'm not sure what to call it, like a I, I keep wanting to say like auditions to become part of their crew, but that's not like it's not really the right word, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, Try out like it's it. Yeah, maybe tryouts, but um, and they're doing this because they're trying to get other badass pirates on their crew to help defend them from the Marines. But yeah. also, guys, if you hadn't done this, maybe you wouldn't have needed to be defended from the Marines because they wouldn't have known that you. Were you know what I'm saying? It just felt very yeah. much like a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's all I'm saying. Probably. But I mean, I guess, like, the, the fake Luffy had in mind to get bigger or, like, more famous, you know? Like, maybe it was, he legitimately was like, yeah, I'm going to be, I can do this, you know? Um, That's interesting. It hadn't occurred to me, but maybe purposely drew all this attention to get, like his new his face put out there a little bit mm -hmm. more okay yeah i i could see that um so <laughs> so let's start off with the actual start of episode 520 big guns assembled because we start off with this amazing concert that brooke is putting on and i i you know 
There's so much about Brooke's whole look that I love as with him being a rock star at the moment. He's got these flowered pants. He's still got that like cravat thing going on, but he's also got a big furry vest. His guitar is in the shape of a shark. Mm. He's got heart sunglasses, but the hearts are on their sides instead of upright, which frankly is genius. I have never seen those like me I'm sure they exist somewhere, but I have never seen heart sunglasses where the hearts are on their sides like that. And that makes so much more sense. I have several yes. pairs of heart sunglasses and the, the bottom of the heart pokes your cheeks. And so they lift yes, up. It's like, yeah. It's not like I'm just <laughs> And he also yeah, no, has he this, uh, this hat that has like a hat. crown attached to it. Yes, I feel so. I think so. I don't even, I'm sure if it is like a crown crown or is it just like, you know, actually made out of um, cloth, you know, like. Part oh, of the I see that. I'm, okay. But yeah, I mean, he, he's the soul king. So a crown would be appropriate. I guess. <laughs> yeah, but this, I don't. Uh... I, I said this before. I'm not uh, a big music person. I do like this song that he is like performing. Mm -hmm. However, I have no idea if this is soul music or not. Again, I'm totally not the right. Person you know, that's a good question. It. If it's soul music, I don't know either. But I will say. It's like in the last episode with him saying Soul King, my immediate thought was like Elvis, you know, being the king of rock. But mm. it wasn't until this episode that I realized like it's likely they're kind of doing a little bit of a Michael Jackson thing as well. And that makes sense because that was really more how he was introduced was like with a Michael Jackson, Jackson ish vibe and plus going to like Thriller Bark and everything. Um, yeah. and there, the beginning of the song, the first few notes is like really, really similar to a Jackson five song. It doesn't, it doesn't, the song isn't, but it's like the very opening of it. I was like, wait a second. Are they about to perform a song that exists already? But no, it imagine? was just something that was very reminiscent of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I totally know that like Uda himself is like some quad into music and, um, surely the animator or like the people who made the music for the show also made put in some Easter eggs or something like that. I could That's definitely true. see that happening. Yeah. Um, so he he goes backstage and pours milk over his head. Um, in a scene that felt like it was going to matter a lot more than it did. <laughs> This was a weird moment where I really thought we were doing something. I almost thought it was going to be like, we're playing around with the stereotype of rock stars being drug users and that it was going to be like, he's getting high off milk. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I thought it like, isn't there like, is it Britney Spears who has that song where she goes on a ch chair and then pulls on something and then water splashes No, down? Well, she may have also done it, but the original is Flashdance. Okay, I again not don't know my history. From a musical. Yeah. yeah, but but I I, f I know that like image that scene and something like that invoked it for me, like what Brooke did. I didn't think of that, but maybe that is what they were doing. Okay. But yeah, this like this wound up kind of not mattering at all. So I was like watching yeah. it, waiting for there to be something that clicked about it for me, and it just kind of doesn't and it was weird. Um and there is somebody that we saw last time, like, being like, you're not going to do this to me. And I completely forgot about that. But it turns out, we find out later that it is his manager who is really pissed because he's making a lot of money off of this guy. And now he is going to retire. So he's like, instead of just letting him retire, I'm going to call the Marines and tell them who he is so that he'll be arrested, which is a very weird choice to make because that also doesn't get you the money that you want, sir. But I guess it was just for the pettiness. I yeah. think it was purely for that, right? However, he, when the Marines show up, they know 
who he is, like who Brooke is. So mm -hmm. maybe the guys just wanted to get the bounty, you know, like basically. Um, oh, the bounty. Yeah, that makes sense. I forgot about that aspect of it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, he gets some money no, out of that but, after all. But maybe take it back. Also just, just petty. I could also like column A, <laughs> column B, you know. Yeah, and I'm gonna just sort of like do like talk about Brooke's whole deal here because we go from there technically we go back to the Grove 46 where everybody is gathered up at the fake straw hats and that Marine who gets caught but I want to deal with Brooke first so Brooke is he goes back out on stage and he is about to it seems make like the announcement about his retirement and this is when the uh, manager comes out with a gun the Marines all announce themselves. All of this goes down. And a lot of people in the audience were like, I can't believe he's a pirate. And it was one of those things where I was sort of like, I didn't expect them to care that much. I thought they would just be like, oh, who cares? Because he makes amazing music. But it felt very much the way that like we've been reacting lately to finding out that somebody is a predator and just being like, wow, that ruins everything. And now I can't listen to your music anymore. Like I was just, it definitely had like a sort of, your, all of your faves are problematic and uh, don't meet your mm -hmm. heroes kind of thing. Definitely. Um, and he, he, he ends up performing one more song, even though his manager is like, I'm not going to let you do that. And there's a really great moment where the manager is standing there with his henchmen who are weeping from the song mm -hmm. and they just shake their heads at him and put their fingers on his gun and push it downward. And I loved that moment so much. That was truly laugh out loud funny. <laughs> you were like, no, he's too, I... this is too touching. Exactly. <laughs> the music, the music made us feel this way. Like... I love the manager just looking like everybody is under the spell kind of that, you know, because the song, the lyrics are something about like all of us and, and the times we've had together. And I won't mm. say it's like a song that has forgiveness in it exactly, but there is a sense of like he's extending grace to his manager and being sort of like, I understand why you're upset, you know. So mm. even though the manager himself wasn't prepared to just drop his gun, he does pause when he has his gun up. Like he had been going to pull the trigger, but then he heard him and yeah. is like, well, now I'm not sure. And then the other henchmen are the ones who really get him to like fall back. Mm. Um, but not like really, I mean, speaking about Brooke, he's like, Everybody of the Straw Hats spent their two years somewhere where, like, it made sense, kind of, where they ended up. But his mm -hmm. was just really like, why, why was he sent to this weird island yeah. and everything? And yeah. My headcanon for this is, Brooke has not been a part of the crew that long. So basically, Kuma showed up and was like, who? Who are you? <laughs> um, well, I guess I will send you to a place where they worship devils because that's all I can go on. So, <laughs> but I, I like and, that. Yeah. And just all with Kuma himself was just like, I have no idea what to do with you. So, good luck. I I like that because like what I had been assuming happened was that. Kuma had some sort of magical power where he could tell where the best place was to send somebody instantaneously. But I like your assertion that Kuma had a plan in place and like researched them and knew from extensive like browsing on Airbnb exactly where to put them. I think I like that better, actually. Okay, I accept it. I accept this headcanon. Thank you. Um, so I'm trying to remember because I'm I'm having to kind of jump all over the place here. I'm trying to remember exactly how he winds up getting out of the situation because like he's on stage for all of this. 
continuing yeah. to perform. Um, these sunglasses and are so good. Ugh. Basically, what happens is like the the crowd goes wild and basically keeps the Marines at bay. And right. And then there is like an explosion, like a stage explosion. And I feel like what? Yes. He, and then he apparently jumps jumps up in the air, and one of the flying fish, because it was timed apparently, um, was there to give him a ride. You know. Okay. That was. Yeah, I completely forgot about this because I was much more interested in everybody's reaction to him than really like him getting out of this. But, and he says in his like kind of speech before he does this whole song. Um, he says like, while I am good with a sword, the point of me as a member of the Straw Hats is to make everything more fun. And I really appreciate that primary motivation, you know, just mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fight if it comes down to it, but it's not my passion. You know, Zoro fighting is his whole passion. That's everything he wants to be doing all the time. And with Brooke, it's much more like, no, I've learned how to defend myself. But I like if I'm if I have free time, that's not what I'm going to be doing. I won't be practicing sword fighting. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, so I really like it. go ahead, say yeah. again. No, I was I was saying I really like him. Like Brooke, he is really one of my one of my favorite straw heads, to be honest, um, and. One of the main reasons is that he's just fun. You know, there is like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe others get like, um, are, were longer with us and like have more screen, screen time or whatever, get the more epic moments, but he's just so fun. I just, he I is. just love it. Yeah. And I often think about, cause you know, there are those inter interstitials on this version and, uh, how whenever it was his, it was like the, violin on a, a seat in a really fancy room with like a cup of tea and an armchair and it just all looked so nice and I was just like ah oh, Brooke I feel like we really would have seen eye to eye on how to live except for him having to ask to see Nami's panties again yes. look I'm gonna detour here real quick mm -hmm. what the fuck you guys with the grossness in these episodes, it feels like this show has this sort of low level, like non-existent thread that occasionally the thread will expand and we'll have a, a just a pop of grossness here and there. These three episodes, it felt like that went from a pop to like a nuclear explosion. It was not just Brooke. But also fucking Sanji is not only trying to get with every woman he sees, but he is actually upskirting to check the genitals of Perona, which is just so incredibly fucking gross. I just hate it so much. And then you have Brooke showing up and like doing the same thing. And even them like looking at Boa through the thing. I mean, it's just... It's there's a point where Sanji is like in midair after having kicked a missile that's being shot at them, and he looks down and zeroes in on Nami's boobs. And and like he's so horny that the projection of the blood from his nose sends him flying like a rocket. I can't, you guys, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't take it. <sighs> Yeah. Why? Um, okay, I'm going to say um, a lot of things, like in the sense of like, um, I also don't like it. Again, Steel Brook is one of my favorites, so all your favorites are problematic, but I don't like that part <laughs> of him. Um, another thing, I the Sanji thing, that is something I'm also here to tell you, is that this is a joke that Oda decided to put in here and it will not be here for the rest, but it will be here for like the next arc, like half of the next arc. So for like the next few episodes, oh 
Sandy okay. is going to be um, horny. Let's put it that way. It is okay. a sad thing. No, like the, again, another thing where the fandom is like, why? Like a lot of the fandom, not everybody, because yeah, because it has its sure. audience. But um, yeah, no, that it, it's a shame. It is a shame that 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 is how it, it is. Just, so a, a it just feels you. so like it's so boring. That's the other thing for me is like Sanji is a great chef and we get him like collecting ingredients, but there's very little talk about what he gets, what he's planning on making. We don't actually see him do any cooking and it's just him just like, you know, just fawning over women every second. And I was just like, I actually kind of like the other stuff that Sanji's about. Why can't we have any of that? And I get the point it's supposed to be. He spent, you know, the past two years on an island with no women. And so, yeah, it's like he was in jail, basically. But also, I was, I'll was i confess to you guys that I was disappointed at the direction that things went with what what happened on that island. Because it really felt like at first we were just going to do Sanji embracing his feminine side and understanding the appeal. But then he does this complete about face, acts com- totally like repulsed by everybody. And it seemed almost fucked up to me that they show up on this island to fight for him when he rejected them so utterly and called them freaks repeatedly and was just really shitty to them. And then the joke isn't, it's the same thing with the, the Marines that they come across is like how disgusted by them the marines are and yeah. i was just like man i really thought we like we made so much progress in so many ways and then you just went back to these people being the butt of the joke in a way that i really thought oda had grown beyond and i was let down by that i have to admit yeah no i'm absolutely there with you this, this is like a low point for for like this kind of of I don't even want to call it comedy. I don't know. Yeah. Just, just need to be there. And it would be so awesome because there is the groundwork of like Eva and um, Bonclay, you know, like mm-hmm. all of the, that we get to know and uh, Inuzuma, you know, like, like we have so many badass characters from like this tribe, let's call it that way. And it is like by now, they should get the respect that they deserve, I feel like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I just wanted to mention that because it just, it feels like everybody, I had differing reactions to everybody's arc and what they were doing because some of them felt like more interesting than others. And um, I think ultimately Sanji's is the most disappointing to me because it just feels like, we didn't get anywhere with him. The only thing that changed for him is that he can fight better and apparently can cook better, but we haven't even seen that yet. And ultimately he really regressed to behaving as he did when he first arrived there and everyone else, it seems like, you know, they grew as people and made friends and it, they Mm -hmm. became better and have allies that they like earned except Sanji they shouldn't be here helping him he sucked to them like they should definitely have just let him go on his merry way and fend for himself that's all I'm saying absolutely another change about Sanji did which you probably did not notice and I did not notice for years is um, Sanji has like hair over his eye you know, like over one eye mostly. Yeah. Um, it's the different eye now. Like it's oh, it flipped between... to the other side. <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> Before it was always the left, and now after the time skip, it is like always the right or the other way around. <laughs> I did. Not I know. love it. <laughs> he just fucking started parting his hair on the other side. That's really yes. funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> considering that that's like a thing in a lot of comedy like you know the uh i'm gonna do something really dramatic to my look and then they just part their hair on the other side 
you know, considering everything, I mean, he did grow facial hair. So Mm -hmm. it would have been kind of funny if that were the only change. But since he also has the facial hair, that's, I guess, a pretty significant difference. I wonder if he keeps it. Can you tell me that? Or is that a spoiler? Does he keep his facial Mm -hmm. hair? I think he keeps it. I do feel like he keeps it. Like, yeah. I don't, and also don't think there's a spoiler. Is there a time where they all have to get butt naked and shave everything off? Hmm. It would be one piece. <laughs> well, only one way to find out, I guess. Yeah, I, uh, I'm also interested in like the fact that everybody looks so different. And I, I, I'm assuming that for the most part, this is just how they look now, you know? Um, if there's anybody out there who is just like, no, I don't recognize this new look. I refuse to acknowledge it. I can see that with Frankie, especially because he just looks insane mm-hmm. now. Like what? Mm-hmm. I get that. That's like part of the point as well is that Nami stops and looks at him and it's just like, why would you do this to yourself on purpose? Like what, what good are it? I will say though, the joke when he opens his hand and he has a little hand inside was inspired. I loved that joke so much. That was so funny and so creepy mm-hmm. on like a level, but really, really funny. Mm-hmm. It was, um, I actually gonna say, I do, did not like Frank's form at all, like his new form. Um, but I, when you spend like another 400 episodes with this new form, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> It is kind of normal now, you know. It's kind of like I'm it grew at it, on like, you. Yeah, it's kind of like oh, cool. And of course, there will be like um, costume changes and stuff like that. We have seen that in the past sure. as well. So depending on the look, sometimes it sometimes it surprisingly works well, and sometimes it doesn't, you know. And he can also change his hair at will, which yes. I liked because I said last time that I didn't like his sort of shaved head, but it turns out. That is very much like a temporary thing. He can undo that at any point, which I was gratified by because mm-hmm. I much prefer Frankie with hair. His hair was his thing to a degree that like now his look is so distinct that that's more his thing. But I like that his hair was part of his original appearance before he did any of this stuff to himself. You know what I mean? So I really oh. wanted him to keep that. It is like. Frankie is truly like a toy. Like he is basically <laughs> like a robot, but also is like um like those dolls that you can put play doh in and the hair comes out, you know. <gasps> oh I forgot those were so creepy. <laughs> yeah. But something oh, like I that. Oh I forgot like about it's... those. Yeah. Maybe Ugh. he has just play doh in his head, you know. <laughs> God, <laughs> shoots out. it makes me think of I, when I when I was little. I had this recurring nightmare, and it I it was like I was in a house. It was a very simple nightmare because I was a, a child, but I was in this like old Victorian house with my family, and there was a doll that had grown to life size standing in front of our door, and its hair had begun to grow really really fast and it was filling up the house and we were trying to get out and everything was closed and it was standing in front of the door and we couldn't get past it and that was the whole dream was that just that its hair was growing and it was like creepy and uh i wonder if it was like i saw a commercial for that the dolls with the play-doh hair and it just lodged in my brain and became this like creature but That would make sense, actually. Now I like this thing with Frankie's hair a little less. I'm sorry. (laughs) I didn't know that um, I would bring in trauma here. Hmm. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Um, Okay, So so we have Brooke, basically, out of the mm -hmm. way for the moment. I mean, he arrives at the ship, but that's pretty much when everybody gets back together. So I feel like we can talk about it then. Yeah, we can go back to the the fake straw hats. Um, mm. Yes. This storyline, like I said, I love the fake straw hat concept, but I think it, it began to wear a little thin after a point because 
it was just him being like straight up to everybody do what I tell you and everyone just agreeing but then we introduce what is his name wet caribou yes um he we see he has like a devil fruit power but I feel like we don't get the name of it yet I'm assuming right. wet it's some like water water fruit or something I don't know like he turns to liquid when somebody stabs him and the sword gets like sucked into him and disappeared mm -hmm. so it was like he it turned into like, liquid but it, it was like brownish though like like not was it water yeah it was okay. like yeah like brackish water like not it did not look drinkable <laughs> or like right okay what is his brother's name because he's got like a is it a lizard just draped <laughs> over his head yes i don't know what's going on with that character honestly i mean he is um has no lines at all basically except apologizing and always apologizing mm -hmm. in the wrong direction and that's like his whole thing but I get it. me neither his look too is so like all one piece characters look crazy pretty much everybody except there's been like two characters who were notable because they looked the most normal but uh his brother has possibly the dumbest look of any of the characters like it's not even that he looks crazy it's just stupid it feels like somebody was in a room with a bunch of random stuff and they just grabbed whatever was at hand and they were given 10 seconds to make a new character design and they just put on random clothes and grabbed a, a toy lizard from somewhere and put it on their head and Oda was like yeah good enough and and drew it it's like it does there's nothing to it it doesn't make any sense did you see a post i put in the patrons only facebook group of those bands do you did you see this like last week i don't think so no all right i'm gonna find this link and share it with you because it was a um, a series of photos of really goofy 80s bands and their outfits that they wore. And uh, every single solitary one of them looks like a group of One Piece pirates. Like, it's remarkable. It almost makes me think, like, is this what Oda looked through? I'm sharing the link in the chat. Click on that and see if it works for you because I'm not sure if you need to be like signed in and everything. But I think when you see it, you are going to understand exactly what I mean. I'm going to try and remember to include this link for uh, this episode. Let me put it in the notes over here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, yes, definitely. But there are like 21 of these pictures. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a lot. You don't have to go through all of them. <laughs> but it just, like, the vibe feels very One Piece to me. Yes. And I started to be like, is this what Oda's been doing? Has he just been looking up, like, weirdo bands and, and designing things after them? Because it's so on point that if you told me these people were all cosplaying characters, I would absolutely believe you. I wouldn't even question it. Yes. I mean, I could. <laughs> okay, now I have to get out of this. This is too funny. Like, like some of them. <laughs> it's like, really like, funny, right? The, the thing is, the thing is, like, they are all like normal humans, and some of them I see and would be like, "Oh, I know what Oda would make out of this." You know, like some mm -hmm. weirdly shaped or like like really big on top and no no legs or something like that. <laughs> <It would be. laughs> Um, by the way, I did look up the um, because we were talking about the fake straw hats. Um, they do voice um, each other's also in English. Like oh, okay, I forgot to even look at this. Okay, but apparently, like fake Luffy is spoken by Sanji's voice actor, fake Sora okay. by Usopp's, Nami's by Choppers. Soga King is spoken by Frankie's voice actor. Fake Sanji by Sobo. Of course, they would. Yeah, <laughs> switch those. Yeah. Um, 
Chopper's fake Chopper is spoken by Luffy. So Luffy spoke the fox. Like our Luffy spoke the <laughs> spoke the fox. Tent got the kick, uh, the shit kicked out. That's of funny. And then fake Robin is Nami, and fake Frankie is voiced by Brooke. Yes. Oh, okay. So, I, I again, I'm not so familiar with the English voice actors, so I did not um, pick up on that. In the Japanese version, I always find it so funny. It's you just really hear it how they go for it. Yeah, that must have been really fun to do. Mm. Um. What can you just while we're on the topic of voices? What is the name of the character that's that handles the uh, the Kuma bots? Sentamaru. Sentamaru. I cannot get that name to stick in my brain, and I also can't get it to stick that Sentamaru isn't a woman. It's like it keeps. I keep thinking he's a woman because like he wears an outfit that looks a little bit like a dress and then it's mm -hmm. definitely like a female voice actor doing his voice mm -hmm. and it still sounds feminine enough to me and plus he's got like the bobbed hair that's like a little long and has a sort of round face that has a, a sort of feminine like shape to it i absolutely mm -hmm. every episode i'm just like oh this chick nope Nope, nope, and have to like just completely change my brain over. Um, I, I get you. Like, I, I have the same experience with like on Skypea. Um, there was like this literally sphere shaped character. I don't know if you remember. Oh, the the bad guy. Ball. Yeah, with the balls, like with the mm -hmm. cloud balls. And yeah, that that was also a dude. And I was always thinking that's a girl oh no it's not <laughs> I, I can't quite remember how he looked but I under I think I understand that and Sarah mm -hmm. in the chat saying I'm with you on constantly and thinking since tomorrow is a woman okay good it's not just me yeah. a wet haired that's caribou right. that's right thank you Sarah just a real quick aside Kobe um, <laughs> not in these episodes at all but no I um, told you once over Discord that the power that Kobe has, we have seen before. Um, and by now we know it's Haki. So, or not exactly like he, but basically the other character that could basically tell that people were dying on the death battlefield was um, Inaru from Skypia. Like, the oh, guy who was okay. a god. Because he right. made like the whole like deathmatch kind of deal where he was like I know how many people are left right so I find it like I hope like like I'm speaking from a point of like where I was at this point in the story I was like I hope Kobe gets like this power under control because it would be like a really interesting like not an offensive tool necessarily but really um, powerful it could be really powerful when you would just be mm -hmm. so aware of every living being around you um, so yeah that's that's just one thing I wanted to mention because I love Kobe he's my best boy was was Enaru able to tell what people were saying because it felt like Kobe was hearing the words as well that people were saying mm -hmm. that's the kind of feel like if you talk bad about Anaru, he would like struck you down with lightning. Like that was basically why everybody was so afraid of him. Right. Okay, like, so yeah. Talk bad about him. Like he was able to literally hear what people were saying all over the island. Right, right, right. Okay. Um yeah, I I just want Kobe to be able to like get his power under control because I want him to be able to do anything badass because he's he, your boy needs a win like he has just been put through a lot and I feel like he deserves a little bit of a glow up you know so however that would manifest but it could be very useful to the marines and I don't like that that's the mm -hmm. problem you know fair fair <sighs> um 
All right. So I'm trying to see, I'm going to, I'm going to jump into the next episode because we pretty much like cover the beginnings of the deal with the straw hats. Um, mm-hmm. I do want to talk about how, uh, how Luffy is in and amongst everybody with his impenetrable disguise that he got from Boa, which is just a nose with a mustache attached. Yes. I, really really enjoyed not only the fact that he is just kind of confused about everything and like in the last three episodes he thought that Sanji and Zoro the fake ones were the real ones this episode he is starting to be like you guys are acting weird and you don't even really look like yourselves what's going on so he's starting to like get that things are off but he isn't quite you know and then When everything begins to pop off, at the end of it, I thought he was, like, going to jump into the fight somehow. And he doesn't. He just says, wow, all those guys were fake? That's blowing my mind. I'm going to get out of here. And he literally just walks away. And I burst out laughing because I was expecting this to be the point where he really begins to show off and Mm -hmm. it doesn't even occur to him to get involved and honestly when i stop to think about it why should he get involved this doesn't have anything to do with him why is he gonna out himself you know like but at the time i figured that he was gonna get like pushed and and would have to and -hmm. the fact that he just doesn't was so funny (laughs) it really is like the it's typical Luffy. Like he just does not necessarily care about his reputation in that. Like another character would be like, "How dare you to use my name for this mm-hmm. like farce of a uh, uh, piracy or something like?" Like he would be another character, but Luffy is just like, "I need to go," <laughs> or like, "I don't even I, care." I'm like very into the. He seems to have tried to. Uh, what's the word adopt the the attitude of shanks of just like leaving shit alone if it's not crucial to to fuck with somebody and i just really like that you know even in the town when he first runs into the fake luffy the dude makes a big deal out of everything and the fact that luffy like walked into him and luffy could have just been like well fuck you then and started a fight but instead he's like oh yeah sorry and then just keeps walking and decides that he's gonna let it go it's not his fault that it didn't get let go but he was fully just gonna you know continue on and i just really it's not luffy has always kind of been this way in terms of like letting things roll off his back more easily than i would expect but it feels like it's gotten more purposeful recently mm. than it used to be. It used to be like he let things roll off his back because he wasn't understanding the insult somebody meant. And mm. he was just like, because, you know, he has ADD, clearly. So it felt a lot of times like he just wasn't focused enough to really realize that somebody had insulted him, you know. But now it feels much more like he knows that and he has just decided that it's not worth it to engage at all and it's a conscious choice instead of just like a lack of attention yeah and I I really like it like also like another thing just to go quickly back to because you brought up Shanks like the last scene that we saw Shanks was actually at Ace's funeral like where Luffy he wasn't there Mm -hmm. of course you know like and Shanks actually says, like, it is okay to cry. And you said, like, you were kind of confused because what Shanks said before that is Ace was so much like his father, like like Gold Roger, mm-hmm. who never turned away from a fight, who never showed weakness. He was a true man. But then Shanks said, but Luffy, it's okay to cry because I wish that Gold Watcher showed us like it is okay to show mm-hmm, the feelings. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it is a, actually like a 
contrast between Luffy and Ace, where it's like, Ace did follow the footsteps of his father and did not become, or he, that's what he died, uh, why he died, you know, like that's what killed him. While Luffy um, is the one who survived, you know, like I feel like there is like some symbolism there. Like the next generation yeah. basically cannot be acting the same as the one before him, before them. Kids are getting yeah. woke. It's uh, it's the effeminate qualities of the modern man. Men are turning into women now with all their crying. Soon they'll be wearing dresses like Sanji. Oh, no. Yeah. I think it's yeah. for the best. And I think that Oda believes it's for the best. But, yeah. uh, God, there are really people out there who are just like, no, we liked it when men just kept everything inside and then committed suicide. Okay, you weirdos. Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, a plus. <laughs> oh my god! I forgot yeah, that I... Zoro and Sanji are fighting each other. I just got like, I just, I'm like, you know, scrolling oh, through the yeah, episode, yeah. and I just saw yeah. the two of them. And I was like, oh, you two. Everybody else is like greeting old friends, trying to find, and the two of them instantly get into it. I like it in a way. But I also find it very, very tiresome. I did appreciate that eventually Nami is just like, how are you guys still this fucking immature? How did you grow in all these other ways? And yet you are still the same assholes. And I was like, questions that need answers, Nami. Absolutely. I, I mean, I kind of like it that um, <laughs> some things, uh, like as you said, like we, we see them grow and change in some ways. But mm -hmm. other things that stay the same and I like first time watching this um, I was kind of worried like that we would get like basically a whole new cast kind of deal you know like, like basically oh. two years have passed and they're all like super different and mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. I personally was press pleasantly surprised where it was like oh no they're basically still the same characters with a little yeah. tweaks you know then mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it personally. Yeah, I could see what you mean. It hadn't really occurred to me that things were going to be that different. But um, it, it like if they had been, I could see it being very disorienting. So I do get what you mean. <laughs> I think I would have liked it if there had been maybe a bit of a... Uh, like Mihawk's deal is just that if somebody is beneath him, he doesn't even want to engage. And I would kind of like it if th that was something that Zoro had adopted a little bit where he decided that he was no longer going to dignify Sanji's like mm -hmm. attempts to rile him up. And that made Sanji even more mad because like, there's nothing like wanting to get under somebody's skin and you're apparently having no effect. Like, that's infuriating. So Absolutely. I wouldn't have minded a little bit of a different approach, but. Yeah, but I feel like Sora is not too smart for that. Like, yeah. He's a real himbo. Yeah, we love him. <laughs> uh, so um, the Marines, they. Um, the Marines. Find the, the fake straw hats and are like, right. haha, we <laughs> trapped you. And they have That's just like, what they're like. <laughs> yes, they're directly. Ah! Like, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 they are like, um, yeah. They, I mean, the straw hat fake Luffy is like, we will get out of this by um, taking a guy hostage. Like they already caribou basically found one of them, like a spy mm -hmm. or like what's it called, the scout. Scout, that's the one. Thank you. And but Caribou doesn't want to do it. Like he's like, mm, I mean, I get the plan, but this guy lied to me, and that is like basically the worst thing you can do. So he dies. I have a lot of questions about Caribou. Mm. A lot of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna look him up, and I'm not looking up information, but. 
I am going to look up his character so that I can describe his costume with a little bit more accuracy because it needs description. So first of all, the man has one of those like weirdly tapered heads with shoulders that are triangular and go directly into the crown of his head. And that already is a real look. His hair sort of sticks out in a thatch and he has a very, very long pointed tongue that looks like it would probably reach beyond his ear if you were to just grab it and pull on it, it would probably be like a foot long. It's extremely unpleasant. He also has these green eyes with a sort of like lighter circle of green in the center that do this weird sort of rolling thing. Yeah, I hate that. Oh my God, it's so unsettling. Mm. I hate his eyes the most. It is like, <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. I wanna. I wanna say snake-like, but that's not. I don't feel like that's they're right. not it's really. Just... But no. They're, but I get what you mean. And like, and his outfit. So he's wearing a pair of like very normal-looking boots and orange pants. But then he's got this white shirt with an X over it, and I think what we're meant to be getting off of him is a little bit of like a crusades or inquisition or something kind of vibe due to his talking about like sinners and redemption or whatever. But the sleeves are extremely long and go past his hands by like a foot and a half, which looked to me like the sleeves on like a straight jacket that they tie around you. And so the the design, it felt like we we had a couple of conflicting points here. And then also he's got, um, he's got this long coat that he just wears draped over his shoulders, like a mafia crime boss. And it's black on the outside, but inside it's green and has black spots all over it of different sizes, which I think is meant to sort of like be a snake ish motif to go with his long tongue and his eyes. Maybe. I don't know. I I mean, he's like really an upset character. He is. um, I know people who find him one of the, what do you say? Most disgusting, not disgusting, but just like icky. Like they, mm, mm-hmm, like when you just, mm-hmm. like you get like, yeah, you know, just that feeling when you see him. It's like, mm. yes. He, anytime that you bring religious zealotry into the equation, the ick factor is multiplied by a factor of like 17. It's, uh, d- just to the like to the to the hundredth power, it makes it so much worse. It makes it so much. <sighs> I hesitate to say it makes it less fun, even though I mean that. But I feel like that is making it sound like I don't like watching it. Where I'm not trying to say that I don't want to watch so much as. Like what you said, it's just really, really uncomfortable to watch in a way that the other villains haven't really been. The only other villain that kind of comes close was the guy who was dragging Robin around by the hair. Yeah, Because, yeah, he was just such a real life kind of gross. And there is a real life grossness to this guy as well. Um, And (laughs) there was, uh, did you hear about this, um, this kicker? for the from the Not NFL <laughs> no um I'm trying to Harrison Bucker is his name and he is a kicker on the same NFL team as uh Taylor Swift's boyfriend the Chiefs no. I don't think and, I heard about Okay so like I think it was yesterday he was tapped to to make the commencement speech for his college 
And was it like really misogyny? I、uh, like down talking、yeah. down to women. Oh yeah, I know. I saw one one Instagram video of that, all about that. It wasn't was... just misogyny either. He also was like、uh, talking about how I I think that it's important that we have pride, but not the kind of sinful pride that has a whole month dedicated to it. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. okay. And well, I talking guess about I how women are today, right? And he <laughs> said、really. something about how, like, the women who are graduating here have been fed the most diabolical lies of all. Because you're probably thinking about the kind of careers you're going to have, but the most fulfilling thing you're ever going to do is get married and have kids. And really, that's、no. the thing that you should be most、no. focused on. No, oh, he's saying、God. this to、it. the crowd. Who has just spent four years in college studying and, and like I just can't imagine a worse person to choose for this speech. It's just so utterly so. Anyway, it was just incredibly terrible. And wet-haired caribou coming in with this energy with with this person's speech ringing in my ears. It just feels like he also is too real. Even though he's absolutely over the top insane, of course he is. But there is a streak of familiarity to his grossness, and I think what I hate so much about it is that it's like used as a way to justify what he already wants to be doing anyway. And that's something that I find particularly despicable. If you're doing something fucked up. But you genuinely believe it's the right thing to do. I will still hate that you're doing it, but I will at least respect the fact that you have a belief and you're trying to adhere to what you think is right. I will think that you're fucked up for thinking that's right, but I can I can understand like taking a stand. But I really hate the people who are obviously just trotting shit out like. Retroactively, to make it okay that they're doing something horrible, and that's what it keeps feeling like. Is like, oh, I just want to kill this guy, and I'm going to say that it's because he lied to me. But really, it's about the fact that I'm pissed and take it personally that he lied, not because it's like, you know, a, a hard and fast rule about it. It's just that I'm mad, so I'm going to just rationalize this, you know. Anyway, all this to say, what、yeah. her caribou sucks, and I hate him. That's totally fair. I'm with you. <laughs> um, it's um, yeah. I mean, he does all like it's a bad move. But then again, like I mean, now back to the story where he like kills the marine. But、right. he does believe that this is Luffy. You know, like it is not um. He has no inkling that this all is a ruse. So, so he's、right. like, "Yeah, we will fight ourselves out of it." And this is, I love this scene. Like the the pacifistas show up with、um, Santa Maru、mm -hmm. and fake Luffy, or like the, all the fake straw hats run away. And I don't know how, but they just run into <laughs> into them. I'm like, "Don't you look, look where you're going?" <laughs> <laughs> But I love this scene, like where he's like screaming out, like I'm Luffy. Don't you know who I am? Yada yada yada, and then just smack on the head, like shut the fuck up. And Santa Maru just being like、um, something like your like Straw Hat is not garbage like you. Like he actually puts some respect on the Straw Hat's name, you know? Yeah, he does. He does. He's not yeah, a piece of garbage like, like you. Yeah. Um, and he、That's、names how、lie. many, like how guy, how high this guy's bounty is. I can't remember how high it is. Well, how high is Luffy's now?、Um, Luffy's is four hundred thousand, and this guy's is twenty six thousand. Like Luffy's only at four hundred thousand. God, I thought he was higher than that. Okay.、Um, no, but yeah, everybody here. There, it's something like when everybody. Here's what his bounty is. It almost sound, feels like people are more offended by that than that he's not really Luffy. It's like not only did we get scammed, but this guy is like real small potatoes, and that's even more embarrassing. Oh, four thousand、um, million. 
says Seraphim in the chat. 400 million. I, I thought it was in the millions at this point. Okay. It be like, yeah. I, it's like the, what's it called? The currency change thing. Like it, it could be like, like also they, translation is a little different. Yeah. And I don't for know. them, but I mean, for me, just in general, like to calculate or speak in such high numbers for me is weird. You know, like because our currency is like a hundred is a lot, and over there a hundred is like like with I mean in Japan, uh, like the yen, a hundred yen is like nothing. <laughs> like yeah. Nothing. Um, um, Seraphim is also saying about just jumping back to caribou for just a second. It's extra odd given how little religion seems to exist in this world. We have a few small hints here and there, but this is the first time it's ever really been brought up like this. And yeah, caribou is just a psycho looking to come off as justified in his own messed up way of thinking. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's another thing is like, there's, there doesn't seem to be like churches and stuff here. So it does feel like it's coming extra out of left field because of that. Um, but anyway, back to, uh, Sin tomorrow beating the shit out of fake Luffy, which is wonderful. I should mention too, Fig Luffy is like seeing all these other pirates motive, like mobilizing on his behalf. And he basically like tells one of the guys, you are, if you do this, you'll be set to be my like second in command. And fake Frankie and Nami are like, what do you mean second in command? What about us? And fake Luffy is just like, well, you better make yourselves fucking useful, hadn't you? Because it's just going to go to whoever's the most badass and I don't really need you guys anymore. And uh, I always enjoy whenever people are like in a clique with a really garbage leader and they seem genuinely surprised that that leader sees them as disposable. It's always just kind of like, Oh, sweetie, come on. Like you just, I'm not even sorry for you because it was so transparent, you know? Um. But anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's his cover blown and everybody else just being like, what the fuck? How did he get one over on us so bad? With Luffy off to the side just being like, wait a second. Um, <laughs> and then it. I'm out of like, here. I, I'm just going to say, like, I really love, like, first time watching this, I was really mad at Chopper for falling for them. I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But then after I saw like Luffy, I was just like, okay, Chopper now, like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's it, again, it's funny. This show is funny. It's just like, oh my God. Chopper uh, explaining it as that he can't tell the difference between humans pr very easily. Yeah, okay. It went a long way to like making me feel better about it. But also okay. any time that Luffy and Chopper and Usopp fall for something it's really hard to watch it's very frustrating mm -hmm. i always just want to slap and shake them because it's like guys it's so it'll be so obvious whatever it is them some somebody trying to scam them selling them something you know whatever mm -hmm. but but then you have the flip side of it which is great which is the fact that they all three of them are incredibly easy to impress and so they are the audience you want whenever you unveil a thing that you did because they will be blown away by it and it doesn't matter like the behavior of chopper when he sees frankie's mods is so yes. he literally hyperventilates yes. like yes who has like, to be like, bruh, take a breath let me get you a paper bag to breathe into or something because you are just freaking out right now and I yeah. loved it so much. And Frankie's like purposely like act talking like a robot and stuff to like get him going. And it was adorable. I really, really loved. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people say Frankie has like that energy, you know, like especially for like. <gasps> he does. Yeah. Like down to goof around, you know, just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being a silly dad, basically. I never and, really thought of it that way, but I like it. Yeah, I especially I mean, like it of... in the context of like, because I think at the beginning I said that Zoro was the one with the dad energy because he's like the only grown up and they're all acting like children. And also he's yeah. constantly tired and sleeping. But I have grown disillusioned with Zoro as a person. <laughs> 
So I think Frankie being able to step in and take over that role is for the best. I love that. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, um, where were we? Oh, Luffy. Luffy shows off, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, like, because Santa Mara is like, mm, yeah, but Luffy's here because the um, pacifistas noticed him. So go for him. And Luffy just dodges and is like, hmm too slow or like nah, it's really nope. something to see he just mm. he tells them you guys are way too slow and it's like nothing it's embarrassing almost he goes into second gear i think for this yes that's the one where he steams right exactly. and so like basically before... nothing new but yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, i was gonna say act- something about that he does activate it with his arm and not with his leg, for example. And Oh, I didn't notice that. I didn't remember that he used to activate it only with his leg. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's something. And it is just like him one-shotting one of these pacifistas. Like, I don't know if you remember because it has actually been almost a year since you... Um, were in Saboni the last time, like where the whole crew. Oh. It was like in June or July last year when you were covering these episodes. Damn, and, I did not yeah. remember that. And basically, they were pretty much destroyed, almost destroyed by one of these robots, <laughs> like the whole crew was. Yes. And Luffy. Oh, out I here remember just, that. Movie and that, I mean, it was a great moment for me as a viewer because, like, I've grown afraid of these Kuma bots. They're mm-hmm. really tough. The only thing that undermined that a little bit was the fact that Boa could literally just stand in front of them and be like, no, and then they could do nothing, which is silly, but it's fine. But mostly, I still find them pretty intimidating. And so when they come up against Luffy, I thought it would be a little bit more of a battle. And he just, mm-hmm. second gear punches it and it just goes down and that's the end of it and he just keeps what he just gets his pack again mm-hmm. and leaves and it's that's it i thought this was going to be this long drawn out you know what i mean and it's yeah. just immediately over and everybody around him just being like holy shit did he just do that and he's running away literally like giggling to himself it's so funny um, and this is when he runs into Zoro and Sanji. I want to mention too, I don't know how I didn't notice this last time. I mentioned Zoro's scar, but I didn't notice the fact that Zoro's eye is, it seems permanently shut due to the scar. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know why it just like didn't register. And like I mentioned seeing the figurine that had the scar and I don't remember its eye being closed. So I think that uh, it just, you know, it it failed to register for me. So he's got only one usable eye. Do we ever see him open it? Or is his eye gone behind his eyelid? Why would I tell you? Or maybe you can't tell me. Yeah. Like maybe he opens it and like a demon comes out. It's like... (laughs) 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 I don't know what that sound was, but... (laughs) That's what really oh sound like. <laughs> um, oh, right. And yeah. here comes another pacifista. And we get to see how uh, Sanji and Zoro react to it. And it's very funny because Zoro literally just says, get lost, which I don't know why. But get lost. It's so, it's such a like tame thing to say. It's it, it just feels like the kind of thing you say to like a little brother who's trying to tag along. And uh, he and Sanji both strike at the same time. And each of them tries to take credit for taking this particular pacifista down. And uh, again, everybody in the crowd is just like, you know, oh my God, the Straw Hats are fucking insane. Like, we thought we knew how badass they are. And uh, we were wrong about that. Um. Zoro says to Luffy here, by the way, Luffy, you're number nine. What does that mean? Uh, it is the joke with the 
numbers they arrive. Like so is number one because he was the first one to arrive. And before oh. he he called Sanji number seven because and that gets Sanji mad. <laughs> and Sanji's like Ah, uh, okay. Like you're not better because you arrived before me. But Sora just keeps doing that. Wow, Zoro. And he can he can't even claim it for real because we find out Perona's oh, the yeah, reason yeah, yeah. he even got here. Mm. It makes sense now, because I was like, how is he first? What the fuck? And he isn't first. Perona was first, and she just let him come along because she's generous like that. Mm. Zoro is so mean to her. I just can't. Perona, you deserve better. That's all I'm saying. She does. Like, I'm going to tell you something right now. After I close this window. Um, <laughs> is um, Fan fiction is like a... I'm not into fan fiction a lot. But there are fan fictions about Soro, Perona, and Mihawk in that cast. <laughs> and oh. It is... Yeah, that, that makes a, a lot time. of sense. I could see that because, like, Zoro and Mihawk are both hot, and Perona's hot, but she's also like just a little creepy. But okay, the, those three hot characters, I could definitely understand that. Yeah, like again, I'm not deep into those, but that are, those are the ones where I'm like, I can see it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. Maybe even a frapple situation where like, mm. yeah, I uh, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I definitely stumbled onto a uh, a very like legit drawing of Sanji fucking Zoro at one point. I can't it even remember. Yeah, I can't even remember what I searched, but it was like innocuous. And then all of a sudden, it was just both of them buck ass naked on the floor of like a cabin or something. And I was just like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, I have to assume that this sort of thing spawns a lot of fanfic. Why not? All right, guys, have at it, I suppose. I'm trying to think who I would like fanfic if I was going to do. Nobody's appealing, really. Who's the, like, I feel like there has been one character that I've been like, this person is legitimately really hot. And I can't remember who it is now. Because my instinct is always to pick, like, a real big dude. But the only one I can think of is, like, Frankie. And he, I don't want that at all. I'm going to say, in these episodes, when Rayleigh draws that fucking line in the sand, basically, and just stands there, and we have this front shot, him his sword stretch out and you kind of like he normally has a cape but the cape is kind of like behind his shoulders in this shot and you just see yeah him and it, big I'm dick like, energy i'm like mm -hmm. oh yeah i would be i would be crossing that line just to see what <laughs> i could me. see yeah. some really like uncomfy really luffy on the island oh. because yeah I could be, but honestly, I those are, like Luffy is actually. I mean, of course, we'll have fan fictions everywhere, but Luffy is actually not one that gets fanfic. I'm sure he doesn't. He doesn't give out yeah. any like sexual energy almost ever. Yeah, like I'm not saying it does not happen at all. There definitely is, but I feel like in comparison to others, I feel like it's a little less with him. Um, but again, yeah, I'm I not think that, that I think you're route. right though. Like Rayleigh was the one that I was thinking of as being hot who popped up, and I was just kind of like, "What's up?" Because, yeah, and I'm very curious who they're going to cast for him. Also, Ooh. because yeah. dude, they cast for uh, Garp. He was hot. Mm. I liked him. Um, um, Seraphim is saying, "Pretty yeah. Sir Sanji Zoro is a really popular one." Of course, anytime it's like yeah. two people hate each other. Everybody wants them to fuck, always. I don't know what that is, but it's just this impulse that fandom has. And uh, mm -hmm. it's it's highly problematic, but also very predictable. I, oh, okay, we don't have so much time left, but I was just going to tell this story. I was in Amsterdam and they have like a sex museum. And <laughs> we went there, me and my brother. And what I noticed there, because they have like sex throughout the ages, like, 
thousands and thousands of years ago. We have drawings and stuff, and it is always like people like sex that has something like forbidden or like something aggressive, mm -hmm. like taboo. we have, yeah, the taboo, like we, mm -hmm. the taboo is sexy, you know, and so like two characters who are like fighting each other is like, ooh, taboo, you know, like it is mm -hmm. like something that cannot happen normally. So I find that like, I realized that in this museum, like, oh, that's just the human condition, apparently. It really, really is. Yeah. And it's, no, it's, no I know that that happens for me all the time. Like you add like something that's a little fucked up to a situation and I'm just like, this is instantly hotter, you know? And it just, that's, have you ever seen Fleabag? No, but I actually wanted to because oh, you God. talk about it. I want to, I want to, because you talk about it and it sounds amazing. So there's a priest, mm -hmm. a hot priest. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and, uh, he could get it. Okay. He okay. could very much get I... it. Ooh, yes, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Not to um, the second season, but the episodes are so short and there's only two seasons. So you'll meet him quite quickly. Okay. But uh, yeah. Look, no, may, I, I will put it on my list for the summer. Um, you could watch the I... whole series in an hour and a half. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. short, okay. Oh, no, then I will definitely watch that. I wanted to get like more or like try out new series anyway, like different things. I'm exaggerating; it's not an hour and a half, but it's just very short. <laughs> Ignore me. No, it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I actually do prefer like I don't like movies because I feel like actually movie is for me too little time to get engaged. Or attached to the characters, I'm going to be honest. Most like, of the I time, need, I agree, yeah. I need to oftentimes more time. Anyway, our straw hat. <laughs> yes. They, we, we have like a quick sweet scene between Luffy and Rayleigh, um, where like Luffy tells him, I'm going to be the king of the pirates, which is just so sweet because we had the scene where Luffy did not believe in himself, you know, and it yes. took him like, like, these two years to basically come back and be like, no, I, I can do this. I will do this. And it's just super sweet. And I feel like then basically the next episode or the last episode is kind of mostly we get all the help. Uh, yes. And the most of the straw hats don't, don't even notice it or like are aware that it is happening. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was something that in particular I thought was sort of odd is like, they never mention, oh, our friends are coming to help us. It's always like, it feels as if they, the, they tagged along and our people don't even know that they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't really sure what to make of that. I feel like it is the kind of thing where it's like, you brought me here like the straw hats are thankful that they're here you know like they're basically here mm -hmm. on time so they don't expect anything more you know and they kind of maybe fail to realize that they actually have made some friendships you could say you know like that Perona helped Soro and like the wizards helped Nami I'm just going to call them wizards and you know that all these people help them not because they were asked, but because they want to help, and therefore mm -hmm. the straw hats don't know about it because they were not like, "Hey, by the way, we're going to help you." It's like interesting. Yeah, okay, we will we'll, we'll just do that. But um, I don't know if it, if if it makes actually a difference, you know? Yeah, and I'm trying to think like. Did did Chopper bring any help? He comes in flying on the bird, but mm -hmm. there aren't there aren't other birds, are there? I can't remember if any because like yeah, we already talked about uh Zoro has Perona here. Mihawk does not make an appearance though. Um nope. it's just Perona, but that's fine. Perona's ability is so funny. I, I will never get tired of seeing people just like completely brought to the ground with self-loathing it's very funny yeah, um I, I love it 
I was really like she is one that I was so happy that she's like still in the story somehow because like, yeah, a lot of One Piece characters actually we do not see again. You know, like you mm-hmm. there is also a big cast that we do see again, but there's also a kind of big cast of people that we do not meet again because there are just so many fucking characters in this show. Yeah, but I'm glad that she's one of the yeah that made it basically. I really, I want to like, I'm sure it's somewhere on YouTube, but I want to see the moment where Usopp turns out to be in like immune to her ability because that, I don't think I ever laughed so hard on this show <laughs> as I did at that moment <laughs> because that shit, it was not even just the moment. It was like the voice actor for Usopp and his delivery of the line was so good that I, I had to pause it. I was laughing. So it caught me so off guard. Um, but okay, so Perona with Zoro, the the dudes in drag with uh, Sanji, uh, the wizards with Nami. There's nobody with Robin. She's just by no. herself. Frankie and doesn't bring I, anybody either, does he? No, that also. Like the one with Robin kind of makes sense for me because she was with the revolution and you know, and it is kind of like with the army, and they are yeah. kind of like secret. Like the, it could be that um, it is like, oh, like um, by circumstance, they're also on this island and um, make some trouble somewhere. But maybe they were like, they're. I feel like way more about the low key life, you know. <laughs> like I was sort of wondering if they'd be there because um, this is his son, and that if you know he has been so like uninvolved with what's going on with Luffy for the most part that he would be like, well, I'll send some people this time, but nope, none of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Chopper is just the one bird. I'm trying to think who am I missing? Oh, Brooke, but, but Brooke doesn't, his like audience and stuff. Yeah. They keep, they help him like get away. So it's a different thing, but that works. Mm -hmm. Um, With Usopp, we have Heraklissen. I feel like it's how you say it. Like the right, black uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's Heracles. so weird. Heracles. He's really yeah. yeah. Who's open? <laughs> he is I don't like, know what to make of that guy. I also don't know. I just... <laughs> like, I, I wonder if... Like, was he on that island on purpose or not? Like, I, I'm just, just really curious about, like, his story. Like, Yeah, kind of like, agree. Oh, I want to spend more time with you. And we never see his face. He's just got that no. weird helmet on the whole time. And that's another thing that I was just waiting for us to, like, actually. I thought when Usopp asked him to teach him that it would be, like, a moment of humanizing him and he'd take his helmet off. And he doesn't. And I was like, mm-hmm. is that your actual yeah. face then? Is that helmet, if we like... Would- if we would not know who Usopp's father would is, and that he is with it, with Shanks, I would be like, "Are you his dad?" Like a classic, like storytelling thing, where it's like, "And I was your father all along," but like in a good right. way this time. Yeah, and then the last one is Boa. Boa shows up. Is like, "You motherfuckers right. are in my way." Like, <laughs> I love her so much. She, she's just like, "Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> yeah, one of the weird. one of the guys from the marines is like you're interfering with mar- official marine business and she's like no you're interfering with official marine business and he's like that's a really immature argument and she's just like stone and turns everybody to stone and it was very fun and fucking sanji turns to stone just looking through the like telescope because of course he does ah mm-hmm. ah uh, uh, this guy um, it would have been very funny, actually, if he just turned to stone and then they didn't change him back. And that was how the next arc went, was just Sanji permanently turned to stone. <laughs> oh, it would have been maybe the better option. But you will see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No, it is. I'm going to... Mm. Okay, I also will give you some hope. I will give you some hope for our boy Sanji. Um, there are interesting things to come, like in the future. Like, with him... And with some of the other straw hats as well. Like it is gonna be like interesting to see um 
where like this whole journey will take us. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. And also just in general, I'm just going to say I'm really excited for the next arc of like, for your opinion of the next arc. <laughs> That's more accurate. Okay. Because it is again a divisive one in the fandom where it's like Ooh. some people love it and some people hate it. And I'm going to be curious to see on what side you will be on. I'm also curious because like, and it's sort of weird. Thriller Bark, you had said a lot of people don't like it. And at the time I was like, they're insane. This is great. But looking back, I'm sort of like, yeah. And I can sort of understand what you meant. I still really enjoy it because it's so weird. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, your opinion can sometimes change once you know where things are going a little bit. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, basically what happens is that Luffy shows up. Finally, like they're all reconverse. No, that's the wrong. Like they they show uh, up again. Yeah, they're reunited? Is that reunited, the yeah. They're, yeah, that's that's about right. <laughs> or uh, there's also rendezvousing. Oh, I like that rendezvous. Rendezvous. Yeah. Beneath the soap, beneath the bubbles. Hmm. We can workshop that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there, but that's all right. I'm sorry. No, I'm it's getting fine. a little tired, honestly. Yeah. What time is it uh, there again? Two a.m. It's 2 a.m. right now, yes. Sorry about it. <laughs> no, I'm having I'm having a great time. I I hope I just can uh, make some sense of the things that I'm saying. Uh, uh, I really yeah, am like constantly have... impressed with your like understanding, not just of of English, but like you also are out here playing with slang and stuff. And I'm just like, man, that's very impressive. You have no idea how much it is. Sometimes I try to say something and I'm just like, pivot, pivot. Like, like it is like, it's like, I realize. Halfway oh, through the sentence, it. you're like, no, that's not right. That's not how you say it. And then I have to pivot. And then I find some weird way of saying it that it is technically correct, but it is maybe a roundabout way. And <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that everybody is all together. Of course, Luffy is super into what fucking Frankie did to himself. It's pretty much yeah. like the boys all like it and all the girls are like, I guess. Um, and uh, the Sunny, I want to mention the thing with the coding real quick mm -hmm. because when Robin got on board and she's stepping on it, I was sort of like, okay, but they're not under the coding. So what happens to them? Like I wasn't, I was willing to let it go for cartoons, but also yeah. I was like, ah, what? And uh, it turns out that basically the coding gets like inflated and the ship is inside a bubble. And mm -hmm. so you are under the coding once that's done, which makes a mm -hmm. lot more sense. <laughs> so the okay, coding yeah. is almost like the skin of a balloon. Basically. And however, I just I think I looked this up one time, but this makes no damn sense. Like, physically speaking, we will just accept No. It. No, like, there's no reason why they all of a sudden can go underwater, but it is fine. None. None. It yeah, is. Nami tries to explain it, and it's just like, and then you let the air out, and then there's no buoyancy. And I was like, what? No. And I love that she's like, so do you get it? And I think it's it's Luffy and somebody else is just like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, you clearly don't get it. And I'm like, I don't think you get it either, Nami, because that's <laughs> nothing. Don't pretend that like you're making sense. It's nonsense, but it's fine. Like you're, you're making a bubble. You're adding air. It would make it mm. less likely to sink, if anything, mm -hmm. you know, like it doesn't make any sense, but it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah, then they go on the journey. Like, I wanted to ask you, what do you think of this little speech that Luffy gives at the end there? He, especially, he says something about, yeah, he's sorry for his selfishness, selfishness basically. And Somebody's like, yeah, you're always selfish. And I was like, what? <laughs> and Luffy just laughs. 
And I was like, I show me one person who you tell them they're always selfish and they laugh. Like, what kind of response? It was a weird, weird moment. I, I, going to be honest, over the time, I read this moment as by now. Basically, alone, I came to the terms with that in, in a weird way, Luffy is selfish in the way that he does things without thinking about consequences or thinking about that's others. true you true, know true, true. basically yeah in that way he's selfish and i kind of like the idea of like basically all your friends wanted to get to you because you lost your brother and you and he sent them a message of like hey folks We'll see you in two years. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like, like when you want to put it like that, it is kind of a selfish thing to be like, I know you want to basically all be back together. And I know that you won't help me because that's why we love each other. But for my sake, like, if you want to truly help me, we have to train and stay apart. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that is actually a selfish thing to ask from his side, you know. I interpreted it as like we're we have to make sure that we're not meeting at the place that they'll definitely be looking for us. So I'm trying to tell you for your safety to like stay away from the place for right now. But maybe I was giving him too much credit. <laughs> yeah, could be. But then again, you you, you could be uh, again. There is also another like some people say it would be more selfish of him to say let's meet up as fast as possible because that would Mm -hmm. probably be their demise because they were all still weakened and would probably just Mm -hmm. get beaten again. So, yeah. That's that. I'm going, I'm really excited for what's coming next. I mean, do you have any predictions? Like, (laughs) I mean... I'm really, I don't have predictions, but I'm really interested in seeing getting to Fishman Island because like, I think Usopp is the one who says something like, I thought we could just sink and get there. And I also basically thought that, but now I'm realizing like, we probably are going to have like an undersea voyage of some kind and that'll be fucking fun. I think I'd be very interested. Um, And also just excited to see what Fishman Island is like, because so far fishmen have just been mostly like the weird outliers. So to get to some place where it's mostly fishmen, the fishmen designs are so fucking insane that that is something in particular I'm looking forward to seeing again. I just keep thinking of like that, that pouty lips guy, you know, from, and, uh, yes, I know which one, oh I don't know the name. Was it Kiss? Maybe he, he, his name was maybe just Kiss, but I'm not sure. It wasn't, but I, I don't, I feel like it was something that, I I could not keep in my head because it did not feel like it suited him. But I feel like you called him just duck lips. Yeah, but... yeah, duck lips. <laughs> yeah, like his duck lips. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I'm, well, I'm, we... so I'm looking forward to all of that. But I don't really have any guesses on like what's going to happen. Well, I'm just going to be really pointed because we brought it up. But do you feel like we will see? basically him again or like do you feel like we will see anybody of these people again because we we have seen Hachi right and it's like it's a really unclear thing to me sometimes who is considered dead and who isn't like Arlong is dead I think Mm -hmm. right and so I'm pretty confident we're not seeing him again but his henchmen I don't know like it felt like Usopp killed Duck Lips but he may be alive. I don't know. And, and I also don't know how much Oda cares that it seems like somebody's dead. He mm-hmm. feels like the kind of guy who's just like, eh. he was like mostly dead, but I really liked him. So I'm going to bring him back for this thing. I could see him just doing whatever he wants, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, so that's, that's, I, I assume that we'll see some people that we used to know. Uh, my hope is that they have not advanced at all. So our friends will be able to absolutely crush them with a thumb and it'll be just all over for them because it's always very satisfying to have at least like one or two moments where people get to just show off to somebody who used to to push them around a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to your um, opinions. Me too. Well, not to my opinion, to so the show, but you know. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Seraphim is saying we don't know what happened to Arlong, so he's probably alive. Ugh, fucking guy. Well, what can you do? Um. All right. Well, thank you so much, Florian, for joining me. This was super fun. Really appreciate. I'm always looking forward to like when I have a, somebody to join me on these. It's more interesting. Um, yeah. And thank you to everybody yeah. who's listening. Do you have anything you want to plug before I wrap it? Um, at the moment, no. Like, I okay. do drawings, but I don't do drawings for like more <laughs> than a year now. Like, I, 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 I have to. I have You've to been in school. My, yeah. And it's going good there, but I also have another year ahead of me. So, wish me luck, folks. Wish me luck. I Send do. me good energy. Yeah. All right. That's the that's the plug. Is that Florian wants you to send him good energy? I think that we could all use that. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody. I will see you soon with a new episode. Until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye. Spoiled Network Podcast.